Cleopatra has only recently lived up to her title as a goddess reborn in Civ 6 thanks to her Ptolemaic persona released in the recent leader's past. Today we're going to go over Cleopatra in Egypt, talk about the civilization and leader abilities, and my strategy for playing as Egypt. I'll give them a score for each victory type, as well as giving each persona a final overall score at the end. Remember, if you like this episode, please take the time to leave me a like or give me a subscribe. Also, comment down below what you think about Cleo to start a discussion. Do your ideas match mine? I appreciate the support I'm getting on these episodes, and I keep pushing closer to my 1000 sub mark every day, and I really need your help to get there. Egypt is a mediocre civilization with one pretty good leader ability and one pretty poor leader ability. The civilization ability, Iteru, gives you a plus 15% production to districts and wonders built adjacent to a river while also protecting you from floods. This bonus is situational at best. The flood damage prevention is nice, and it is good to get districts and wonders up pretty quickly. But when you start to seriously think about what this means, the ability shines less and less. River tiles are super valuable real estate. They're used for farm triangles, resources often spawn next to them, and you'll be using them for your sphinxes to make those even better. Not only that, you often get super low district adjacency on rivers. At most, this is going to give you an early holy site and some good industrial zones and commercial hubs, which might help Mediterranean Bride Cleo, but certainly won't help Ptolemaic Cleo because you'll be overriding some of those resources and the appeal bonus you get from floodplains. It kind of fights against itself. Your Sphinxes are also a pretty mediocre tile improvement. They give you plus one culture and faith, adding up to plus two culture if they're built on floodplains, so you pretty much have to build them on floodplains to get your tourism's worth out of them later. You also get plus two appeal to the tiles that are disgusting appeal-wise, floodplains. So it's not going to help you too much, unless you're Ptolemaic Cleo, because she gets crazy appeal bonuses elsewhere. It's not a great improvement, but it can help you set up some nice preserves, close to rivers if you're placing holy sites and theater squares well, as well as your sphinxes. The most useful part of Egypt's kit is the Mariano Chariot Archer. The Chariot Archer is a heavy chariot that has 2 range and a whopping 35 attack. This is almost as strong as a crossbowman, I believe crossbowmen get 40 ranged attacks. So this is great coming as early as they come. However, they are 50% more expensive to build than an archer, so it comes with a big drawback. They are hard to get out in good numbers. But if you pair three or four of them with a hero, you have a great offensive force to conquer a nearby Civ. But that does mean you have to be playing Heroes and Legends mode, which I tend to do all the time because I personally enjoy having all the modes on. I think it is a more expanded way to play, even though you do tend to go Void, Walker, or void Singers quite a bit. If you're playing without those game modes, the Chariot Archer falls back a little bit harder because it's harder to get melee units up to the front lines with them. But just one or two of them can protect you very well from Barbarian's early game, so they're not discounted. Mediterranean Bride Cleo is the weakest of the two in my ability. Her ability allows you to get extra gold on trade routes to other civilizations. But this is only a plus 4 gold per trade route bonus, and this really pales in comparison to some other trade heavy civs like Portugal, or Mali, or even Tokugawa and Nader Shah who get other bonuses besides gold on trade routes. You make trade routes to you better for the AI as well, making them want to send trade routes for you which would probably cause maybe less early game attacks. But on deity level, the AI is pretty aggressive. You're giving them plus two food, which is not a huge bonus, I think, towards them. And their trade routes give you plus two gold, which will give you a lot of cash to be flexible with, but it doesn't really tie very well into your Ziv's kit, because you're relying on the AI to do something, and that's never a good thing. Yes, you can buy chariot archers. But this gold bonus kicks in a little bit later than the chariots come into play. So when I play as base game Cleo, I go all in on this gold focus. I use it to support a culture game. I spread out to as many rivers as I possibly can to get cheaper holy sites, theater squares, entertainment districts, and commercial hubs. The reason I need those commercial hubs is because we need a lot of trade routes, so we need markets. This is a lot of time building districts to get the game plan running, and it makes Cleo suffer for this. 
there isn't very much to say about base game Clio. You're going for a gold game, and gold games lead to whatever type of game you want. Just make sure that you use your archers to gain more territory efficiently. If you have a close neighbor, you need to take cities from them because you need all of the space you can get to get as many trade routes as you can get to get the greatest amount of bonus from her ability. Spread out, hard push gold, buy all the great works from the AI, and purchase your theater score, your amphitheaters, your museums, your archaeologists, and just purchase as many buildings as you can or else you're not going to have a bonus. But you'll see that you don't do this as well as other sibs. With Ptolemaic Cleo, the game is so much better. Her ability, Arrival of Hoppy, gives all resources on floodplains plus one food and plus one culture. This gives you a crazy huge boost in the early game since you have the floodplain bon uh, spawn bias. You will get a crazy good wheat or a crazy good rice farm very early in the game, giving you great growth, allowing you to build settlers out of your capital much more easily. However, floodplain heavy areas tend to be lacking in production. So you're going to grow very fast, but you need to make sure that you're growing onto productive tiles. The best part of her ability though is the plus one appeal that floodplains now provide when they usually provide a negative one appeal. So you're getting like a swing of two appeal here. The appeal changes the entire game for Goth Cleo. When I play as her, I always rush mysticism and go hard on building preserves and groves. She is so good at getting amazing tile yields and we all know that yields are the greatest part of Civ 6. Preserves, holy sites, theater squares, and sphinxes. This is Cleo's greatest ability. Use your archers, spread out, set up your preserves, plan your national parks, and play the best tourism victory in the game. Both Cleos are skewed towards culture wins. Ptolemaic Cleo especially. She gets a 10 out of 10 for culture. Seeing the crazy yields you get from all your preserves are going to feel great, and it gives you such a positive feedback loop. Mediterranean Clio is very good at the tourism game. Gold allows you to buy museums, archaeologists, and great works. You're also able to buy builders and plant forests easier. Gold accelerates games, and Clio needs this acceleration to catch up with the other Civ bonuses. So Mediterranean Clio is going to get an 8 out of 10. It's good enough, but it's not as good as the new Clio because of that crazy appeal bonus. For science, new Clio gets a 5 out of 10. The yields you get from preserves will help you, and the culture boost you get early in the game will help you with all victory types, but she gets no direct bonus to them. Mediterranean Clio gets a 6 out of 10. Gold accelerates your science victory, allowing you to buy your campus buildings, but you really aren't going to get great campuses since rivers have less desirable adjacency bonuses. For religion, Ptolemaic Clio gets a solid 6 out of 10. She gets a faith bonus from her groves, and Egypt itself has bonuses towards building holy sites on rivers. Mediterranean Cleo only gets a 5 out of 10, due to her just really having the holy site bonus. It is a possible victory, but it's not a desirable victory. When you're going for religious victory, you always want a bonus to getting a great profit. And even though cheaper holy sites are a good step in that direction, you're not getting something as good as Russia's 50% off holy site. Diplo is where things start to shake up quite a bit. Ptolemaic Cleo gets only a 3 out of 10. You have no reason to go for this. Avoid it. Don't do a Diplo victory as Ptolemaic Cleo. Old Cleo, Mediterranean Cleo, however, gets an 8 out of 10. She gets bonuses towards building wonders, which is the civilization ability, so I guess Ptolemaic Cleo gets it also. But I feel like Mediterranean Cleo uses it better. This is a necessary bonus. You need wonders for Diplo victories. You also get massive gold bonuses compared to the other uh, Cleo. This is a big help to Diplo. Finally, you get no damage from floods, allowing you to crank up disaster levels and get even more emergencies firing. Cleo is one of the few leaders I enjoy doing a Diplo victory with. Neither Cleo is really suited for domination. The Chariot Archer is great, but it comes so early and is so exp 
expensive, it'll only help you take at most one sieve. Your bonuses are all about peacefully building or having sieves trade with you as either Cleo. So 3 out of 10 for both of those. Just don't do it. Take a couple of cities from a neighbor early before you meet all the sieves so you don't deal with grievances and just skyrocket from there. Egypt was a mediocre, only half fun sieve until very recently. Ptolemy and Cleo is by far the better leader and makes for a fun game. But any sieve that does preserve wells, such as Vietnam or Bull Moose Titty, will get you the same thing. And it might even get it to you in a better fashion. I think Bull Moose Titty's bonus towards tiles on mountains or breathtaking appeal is a little bit better than Cleo's ability. So I'm giving her a B plus. She gets really great acceleration in the early game due to that culture, but that's not always going to win you games if you can't translate it into other things. Mediterranean Clio is less limited because gold is more open, but also a lot less fun and a lot less powerful. Power creep has killed her. She was once the richest Civ in the game at launch, but Mali and Portugal have completely killed her identity. So a C plus overall for her. Thank you everyone for watching, and if you liked it, please give me a like. Don't forget to comment down below what you think about Cleo, and next episode we're going to be discussing Cyrus. As always, this has been STG Sheep, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.